Let us start with the fourth process group in the project management life cycle called project monitoring and controlling. Now this is the process area in which project performance is observed and any variations to the performance with respect to the project management plan are identified and corrective actions are suggested in order to bring back the project performance in line with the project management plan. Now as the definition goes, the monitoring and controlling process group consists of those processes required to track, review and regulate the process and performance of the project. Identify any areas in which changes to the plan are required and initiate the corresponding changes. So basically in this process group you track, review and regulate the progress and performance of the project. So how the project is performing with regard to the project management plan identify any areas in which changes to the plan are required. So you will be identifying the variations or deviations in the project progress or project performance with respect to the project management plan and will identify the area in which those deviations are there. For example, the project might be behind schedule. Now that could be an observation out of you know this project monitoring and controlling process. So in order to bring back the project on schedule, definitely you will have to take some corrective actions. Now when you take those corrective actions, the corrective actions may suggest changes to the staffing management plan in which you will take a decision that you will have to put in put up more resources on the project in order to catch up with the lost schedule so that calls for changes to the staffing management plan but at the same time putting more resources will mean incurring more cost to the project so there will be changes to the cost management plan as well. So accordingly when a change request is raised, this change request will go through the integrated change control process which is again part of project monitoring and controlling and that change request will be evaluated, analyzed, assessed and its probable impact on the different aspects of the project management or project execution will be identified and accordingly those changes will be applied in the respective corresponding project management plans and then this plan will be taken up for execution. Now let us look at the key benefit of this process group. The key benefit is that project performance is observed and measured regularly and consistently to identify variances from the project management plan. The monitoring and controlling process group also includes controlling changes and recommending preventive action in anticipation of possible problems. Now we talk about the corrective actions and also we talk about you no know, preventive action as well. Now corrective actions are where you know you, you say that the certain activities of the project are running behind the schedule. So you will have to take some corrective actions so that the lost time for those particular activities will be covered up. At the same time, the overall thing will be acting as a preventive action for the overall performance of the project as these small activities getting delayed would definitely go ahead and delay the overall project completion date. So when you actually take certain corrective actions to correct the schedule for these activities you will be taking preventive action in order to ensure that the overall project completion is not delayed. So here the controlling changes and recommending preventive action in anticipation of possible problems is one of the purpose of this monitoring and controlling process group. Another purpose could be monitoring and out monitoring the ongoing project activities against the project management plan and the project performance baseline. Now this is where we you know like we 
looked at that project performance baseline is mainly constituted out of three individual baselines scope baseline cost baseline and schedule baseline now the cost scope and schedule forms the triple constraints and accordingly these are the major or important constraints which the project manager has to manage effectively in order to deliver the project with 100% success once you complete the scope management plan you also de define a scope baseline you also set the schedule baseline at the end of the schedule management plan or time management plan and you also set the cost baseline at the end of the cost management plan now these baselines together form the project performance baseline and this project performance baseline will be used for tracking the performance of the project whether it is going to deliver the complete scope on time and within the budget or not so here in the monitoring and controlling process group you will be monitoring the ongoing project activities against the project management plan and the project management baseline then you will be influencing the factors that could circumvent integrated change control so only approved changes are implemented now this is also very important aspects of the monitoring and controlling process group it has got one of the important process called integrated change control so when you monitor or observe the project performance and you find that something is not in line with the project management plan and you suggest that there are certain changes required to be done to the project management plan and its subsidiary plans you have to raise a change request now that change request will go through the integrated change control its impact analysis will be done and with that the change control board will either approve or reject that particular change request and only the approved change change request will be taken up for the implementation and as per that approved change request the corresponding changes will be made to the appropriate project management plans and that will be taken up for the execution